Right. At least a small percentage of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, this is the righteous remnant. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, let's begin, let's jump right in. We're obviously here tonight to talk about uh, the book and the theme of Shabbat, the gift of rest. And I want to begin with what I think, and I think you feel is a kind of crying need in our society for Shabbat, uh, and for so much of what it represents, and that the book has had such a positive reception because of that intrinsic need in society. You begin the book uh, by arguing that essentially this is a gift that anyone in their right mind would accept, and you write, how could I do all my work as a senator if I did not stop to observe the Sabbath each week? Um, there's been this deep rekindling of an interest in Shabbat, particularly, I think, in the information age, as we've had you know, people just feeling enslaved by all of their various devices. This recent book, Hamlet's Blackberry, uh, investigates this. You have organizations like Reboot that have had a national day of unplugging with great fanfare. Maybe you can open by reflecting for us a little on what is wrong with our contemporary culture that Shabbat might be able to fix? Yeah. Um, in what ways are we enslaved in this 24-7 world? And how Shabbat, particularly in your experience, has been able to unlock that? So, okay, that's a big question. I said point that when you told me what you <coughs> wanted to talk about that I've probably done more than 100 interviews or discussions on the book, and his questions were different than anybody else's naturally. <laughs> um, let, me, let me begin way out here. Um, uh, I, don't, I actually thought about this after I wrote the book and it was published. Years ago, I um, spent some time in a conversation with a man whose name I think is Regis McKenna. It's a long time ago. He, he was in, from Silicon Valley, and he said something so interesting to me at the time, I thought, so I repeated, which was that uh, talking about the ages of, um, sort of human development, but history, commercial development. He said, in the agricultural age, people lived where they worked. They lived on the farm. They worked on the farm. In the uh, industrial age, people <coughs> left their homes to go to work in the factory or the office. In the information or electronic age, which we're in now, you never leave your work uh, unless you really exercise some discipline uh, to do so because you can be, there you go. <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, it's all right, it happens all the time. <laughs> all right, so um, because we carry our uh, our cell phones, our Blackberries, our iPads, our iPhones with us all the time. And uh, therefore, the separations, I think, that are um, conducive to healthy living um, are harder to impose. Uh, the, the, the cell phone or the Blackberry can interrupt, therefore, some of your most important relationships uh, when you're home with your family, away from work. Um, they can uh, interrupt you when you're trying to just think and read. And uh, I, I don't know that the Almighty had the black bird in mind when he uh, gave the fourth commandment to Moshe on Mount Sinai to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. But it, of course, it, as you said, I describe it as a gift. It began with a commandment, as we all know. But I've always, or most of the time, experienced it as a gift. And in our time, I think it is a gift that's desperately needed because we are, um, we're not the divisions that should exist. So why did I say what I did about, um, I don't know that I could be the, the center that I'd like to be if I didn't observe Shabbat? Because one, Shabbat uh, does, uh, it stops and therefore it stops everything and gives you perspective. There's a natural way in which you look back on Shabbat to the week that preceded and you think about the week ahead. So, so just physically and intellectually and hopefully spiritually regenerate. So every day is not like uh, this, the, the same day, every other day. Um, this part is the part that, so far as I'm just randomly moving around, uh, the, Two different kinds of people, maybe self-evidently, that have been reading the book and commenting to me. One are people who are observant, who are Jewish and interested in Shabbat and have read it. The other are people who are Jewish and not observant or are Christian. 
And the, the one part of the book that they most mention to me is this part, of, and it's all about the electronic devices. And I had a fascinating, I went out, was invited out to, to Brigham Young University to speak, well, somewhat about the book, but more generally. And the president of the university had read the book, and matter of fact, he was good enough to read the galley sheets, and there's a comment from him, a uh, generous comment in the book, and he said, you know, I gotta tell you that when I read the book, I realized that I'm doing things on Sunday that I should not be doing. And um, I was anxious to hear what he was going to say. <laughs> he said, I'm, I'm, I'm using my Blackberry too much. So I just, I decided after I read the book, I'm going to turn it off. And uh, my Sabbath is much less interrupted, and I find now when I turn it on on Sunday night or Monday morning, there are many fewer emails there because people now know that I, I don't uh, use the Black Parade and they'll wait till Monday morning. And uh, that was a, those are important lessons. To me. So yeah. yeah, it's interesting what you said about the agricultural society because I think what it what it brings in my mind is you know when the when the Mishnah wants to say don't work on Shabbat, essentially what it does is it goes through the list of things that you do in the field and says, don't do any of those things. And the list of things that we think of as melacha, the kind of poor forbidden labors, are simply the work tasks that they did in the field. And you almost imagine if the you know, mission were being written today, the 39 categories would be, don't open your inbox, don't forward <laughs> something, right? don't plug this in. Uh, and there is a truth to that where I think actually one of the challenges for thinking about the halachot of Shabbat uh, are the ways in which actually some things that we think of as maybe minor offenses, oh, it's, it's only the use of electricity, or it's only something that we don't identify as kind of plowing the field, are in a way plowing the field, and actually need to be treated with much greater severity. I agree, it's a good point. So anyway, that's more so to, that I think yeah. you know that, I, I, this is hearsay, so, but I gather in some uh, observant Jewish communities, there's a lot of anxiety now about um, texting among teenagers on Shabbat because the kids are addicted. And even though they're otherwise, apparently, uh, Sabbath observant, but they can't stop texting and they're trying to figure out, notwithstanding the halakha. Right, right.